There's a few ways you can cook potatoes for making JMS. Baking is one method, but by far the best method really is boiling your potatoes. I'm cooking your typical five pound bag of potatoes you would find at a grocery store to make a 30 gallon batch of JMS. You may have caught my last video on YouTube on culturing IMO, indigenous microorganisms, which is a traditional method of culturing beneficial microorganisms for gardening. This approach that we're doing here is a Jadam method, a much more simplified method with a modern natural farming from Korea. Much easier technique as you will see in this video for culturing microorganisms that will help to add benefits in our soil. It'll help to build the biology and take care of a host of different functions in the soil as these microorganisms create a symbiotic relationship with our plants. So after about 30 minutes of boiling, our potatoes are done. You can stick a chopstick into the potato, which will easily stick into the potato once they're done. Here I'm placing them into a blender to blend them up into a nice potato smoothie. So by cooking and blending up these potatoes, now we have a nice and available carbohydrate food source to culture our microorganisms. So next we'll collect our inoculant. Taking a stroll through the garden, looking for some nice leaf mold and signs of life. Mushrooms is always a good sign of fungus in the topsoil and the wood chips here. So I'm collecting handfuls and I like to add some of the mushrooms in as well. But we know we're getting some of those mycelial networks in if we see mushrooms. I'm also looking for pockets of visible mycelial growth which you can really see right here. For making a 30 gallon batch of JMS, I'm looking to collect a football size mass of topsoil, leaf mold, inoculated wood chips. Some of the best topsoil for collecting for JMS is going to be in very established areas of ecology. Some of the best comes from old growth forests. However, if you don't have an old growth forest in your vicinity, no problem. You can collect from places that have some vegetation, trees, anywhere you see an organic top layer, that top soil and those leaves that have been composting and breaking down. It's good etiquette to always cover back over an area where you've taken some topsoil or leaf mold from, just so there's no bare earth. To really increase the diversity of cultures you're going to get in your JMS, it's a good practice to collect samples from different areas of your property close to where you'll be growing. The other really important ingredient here is trace minerals as a food source for our microorganisms and we get that from sea salt. For a 30 gallon batch of JMS we want to use a quarter pound of sea salt and we want to dissolve that into solution prior to adding that into our barrel.
Water quality is also really important with making JMS. We definitely don't want to use any water with chlorine, so dechlorinated water is a must. And if you have chlorinated water, you can evaporate that 24 hours. However, chloramine will not evaporate, so you need to filter that out. And a neutral pH is a good place to be. So we can use a stick or some kind of rod across the top to hang our bag. Here I'm using a five gallon paint strainer bag to hang off of my rod across the top. And I have my potato smoothie here that I'm just pouring through the strainer bag, which I will steep and hang off of the rod. So the second bag here is our mass of leaf mold. This is the football size mass of inoculated wood chips and leaf mold that we collected from the property. And here we're just giving a nice tea bag steep. You can see all the starches leaching into the water and it's nice and milky and hazy. So at this stage, it's really important to get a really nice steep and agitate the two bags here. And I have done this in one single bag, but it's kind of convenient to, you know, separate these two bags. However, whether you're using one bag with both the leaf mold and potato smoothie or two bags, definitely get a good steep and really splash around. This is going to add oxygen into the water as well as really release the starches and all the microorganisms to inoculate into our JMS solution. So after all that steeping, we can really see that the bag of potatoes doesn't have much left in it except the skins of the potatoes because all those starches were liquefied in the blending process and easily released into the water. So now I'm going to tie this off onto my brewing paddle and just hang it right down through the center into the solution. So culturing this JMS here in the avocado orchard where I will be using it, I also add a lid on top. There's dappled light through here, but to avoid UV rays penetrating into the JMS, it's good to put a loose lid on to allow it to breathe. It's important to note here that temperature plays a huge role in the time frame of how fast your JMS will culture. 48 hours later, our JMS is done. You can see a nice formation of bubbles across the top surface. This is when it's at its prime here, and you wanna use this right away. You don't wanna wait any longer. Otherwise, you'll get films that form that start to drop into the liquid and get some off smells, which then tells you that the JMS is no longer good. It's now become a JLF fertilizer. Good morning, Preston Smith with Rogue Natural Farming. I'm in the avocado orchard here in sunny San Diego, and we're doing some remediation. These avocado trees are a little sick, uh, but we're bringing them around. They haven't produced uh, in the last three to four years. We're gonna change that this year with Jadam. That's a goal here, so hold me to that. Anyhow, I wanna show you what's going on. We have JMS ready to go. 48 hours seems to be the sweet spot. So it's springtime, April, uh, 48 hours for your JMSs to finish. I also have JLF 
here, Jadam liquid fertilizer. This is a uh, fertilizer, liquid fertilizer. I started about a month ago with nettles, chickweed, grasses and weeds from the property, uh, nasturtium. So really nutrient dense plants. So this is gonna be some really good Jadam liquid fertilizer to apply. So what I'm doing is doing a feed and inoculation. We're gonna do a foliar and a soil drench with the JLF, Jadam Liquid Fertilizer, and the JMS, Jadam Microbial Solution. We're gonna add those together and apply those both to help remediate these trees, bring them back to health. We're also building soil here. You can see all this, oh, hello. We have a hawk up here. We're building the soil. So I brought in a lot of raminal wood chips, you can see here, and <clears throat> I layered that on top of about an inch of organic composted manure. Not really much soil, topsoil to speak of. So what we're doing is building topsoil. We're creating a protective layer with our raminal chip mulches, which have been also composted by the way, which is really important uh, not to put out fresh wood chips. Make sure they're raminal chips too. There's a big difference with raminal chips versus uh, the trunks of trees. Uh, the cambium layer is much more dense with minerals so keep that in mind when wood ch using wood chips and mulching so i'm going to get to it and do some application here and we're getting ready to apply some jadam microbial solution that's ready after 48 hours ready to go and also some jadam liquid fertilizer So what I'm gonna do over here is use a sump pump from this reservoir. It's kind of small, but this is what I have to use. So we're just gonna keep refilling this. But what we can do with the sump pump here, attached to a hose. And then what I'm gonna use is this fog it. So this is great for foliar applications. This is a four gallon per minute fog it. And this is really good for getting a, a nice mist for foliar applications. I also have your common garden hose sprinkler for watering. Um, this will be great for the soil drench here. So I can use the fogger and the soil drencher. <clears throat> great tools to have for applying feeding and inoculating with Jadam. So I'll be sharing a few different methods for applications of Jadam inputs, JMS, JLF. And here, what I'm doing is diluting down the JLF and JMS into this secondary reservoir that I'll be running water into as I'm pumping. So it'll be diluting as I'm applying. And then I'll just walk back over and scoop my JMS and JLF in. I'm doing essentially two scoops of one gallon into that 10 gallon container and keeping a, a hose feed going while I'm spraying. Let's talk about the time you should apply your JMS. Early mornings and evenings is the best time. Uh, it's not recommended to apply during the day Really no feeding schedule is recommended at the peak of the day. Mornings and evenings are the best time to apply. So I'm really going for a thorough coverage of the ground here, really soaking in my, my wood chips and topsoil. And as Cho Young Sang says, Ja, Ja, which means down, down, deep into the ground. We want to get these cultures to soak in where they do their good work and remediate our soils, break down clay and rock sand into solubilized available micronized nutrients for our plants and also 
help with flocculation as well. Really covering the canopy of the trees as well. I want to get these microbes on the foliage in the rhizosphere, the ground, as well as the phylosphere above ground in the canopy area. I'm back at the reservoir to add in some more JLF and JMS into my reservoir that is self-filling with the hose there as you can see and I'll just keep diluting this down and adding it in. I'm not too worried about getting a super specific ratio of JMS. I really just want to soak it out there, soak these wood chips that I put out and really soak these microbes deep into the ground. When you're feeding trees uh, in an orchard, typically you want to feed around the drip line, the drip zone, right? So as far as the branches are spreading out will be the same radius that the roots are spreading out, those feeder roots. So where water would be dripping off those leaves, those branches and leaves, down to the ground is the same area where you would want to feed the ground but in this case I'm not too worried about that I'm just soaking the whole ground inoculating everything all over the place So I'm going to get a flow of water going into my new batch of JMS here and I'll be applying at the same time so it'll be diluting while I'm applying. Prepping these new beds for planting. This is new soil that we got delivered and I'm doing multiple applications of JMS before we ever plant. I really want to soak in the JMS and We'll do at least three, maybe even four JMS applications. We're going to get some landscaping fabric as well to have a cover on top. This is the Jadam style um, rather than doing a natural mulch here. This is going to help suppress weeds. It's going to help cover the topsoil. All these microbes that we're inoculating into the soil will be covered from the UV rays and it'll also hold in that moisture so we can start really building the life in the soil. Yet another round of JMS for the upper and lower terraced beds we just installed. This is fresh soil from a local company, organic soil, and we're really soaking in the JMS, really helping to just establish that beneficial biology and help get the organic matter in the soil breaking down and available for the plants. Really prepping before we do any kind of planting. It's really important to do three or four applications. We're also going to do another application of Jadon Microbial Solution after we plant as well. Applying some JMS here to some newly planted banana trees. 
So this is the third application I've done in the course of about three weeks. So you can do the math there. I'm doing one application of JMS per week. And I plan to do this for a month before planting. So I'll have essentially four applications of JMS prepping my soil for one month prior to planting applying JMS before and after planting. Here's our raised beds of tomatoes and peppers and getting a nice inoculation there as well. Our landscape fabric is down and we have our drip lines in as well. So I'm gonna turn on the drip line system and apply straight JMS for the fourth application now, just straight JMS along with the drip lines running. I always like to spray down our plants, our nursery that will be planted soon. We got a lot of berries to put in, but I like to give everything some JMS. Here we're gonna do a transplant of a blood orange tree. I got some friends to help out with this one. And here we're gonna demonstrate using JMS for transplanting a tree. So we got a nice hole dug for our root ball tree to go in, but first we want to prime the hole here with JMS, Janelle Microbial Solution. So our roots will sit right into that pool of JMS. It's just a great way to prime a transplanting hole. And we'll soak in the root ball with more JMS as well. Planting on a slope is always interesting. We're going to backfill our tree and top it with some more JMS. fully drenching the root ball with JMS from the bottom and the top. and one happy blood orange tree planted. So I also wanted to demonstrate using a DRAM siphon injector 
to apply JMS. This is nice if you just have a small area that you want to apply, you can carry the bucket of JMS with you. And what happens is the tube drops right in the bucket of JMS and then your garden hose pressure sucks that right out of the bucket and you get a ratio of 20 to one. So 20 parts water to one part of JMS. And you can really go around inoculating and soaking in your soil. This is great for newly transplants and doing small prep and garden beds around your yard. Last but not least guys, if you're liking the content, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and pay it forward.